Welcome to Unity on the Avenue Spiritual Center Virtual Sunday. We're glad to have you here, March 29th, 2020. So I am Reverend Susan Gum, and I'd like to introduce Pamela Wing, our music director, and Greg Wilkins, our percussionist and our gong master. Thank you again for being here, and let us have a song. Well, let's first do the Statement of Faith. So we do the Statement of Faith to open up and to join together as community. So wherever you are, you can say this with you. There is only one power and one presence in the universe, and in my life, God the good omnipotent. And so it is, we give thanks. Thank you for the beautiful song. <laughs> Appreciate it so much. So I hope everyone is doing well and that during this time of our mandate to stay at home as much as we possibly can, that you are finding new ways to connect with those that you love and friends that you haven't spoken to in a very long time. I know I have used my opportunity to do that and it has been terrific. As a matter of fact, last Sunday I had a party at my house. Five of my best girlfriends, we got our glass of wine and we got on Zoom and we had a party. <laughs> and so uh, it was really great to see each other's faces and connect. And one way I just wanna mention that you can connect with each other here is to join us for our Zoom meditation uh, gathering that we have at four o'clock on Wednesdays. So if you need those directions, they're, they're in our newsletter, they're in an email that I sent out and I will send that out again, how to get onto Zoom. It's quite easy. And so we can see each other's faces. We did that this past Wednesday and it was great for those that were on there to, to just see each other and connect again. So join us four o'clock every Wednesday. So when I was out doing my normal daily walk this week, my heart was really lifted up with joy as I looked around and I noticed that spring is arriving and it is arriving very quickly. I'm watching things just pop out and turn green and some tulips are coming up and oh, all just the little things that remind me of the renewal of nature. And as I step into thinking about the renewal of nature, the renewal of this time of year for us here in the Northern Hemisphere, I just felt so connected as I was walking in my neighborhood with life all around me. And I was feeling so many blessings. And all the neighbors are out because that's the one thing we get to do right now is we get to go out and walk our dogs or you know just take walks and so everybody's respecting the six foot rule and we're walking and we're waving and some of us are chatting 
And I've also noticed that families are out. Entire families, mom, dad, kids on their bikes, pulling wagons with their dogs. And it's so great to see that. But at the same time, I think about those that are less fortunate than we are to have our home sanctuaries and a nice place for us to be and to walk. I think about especially those children who are in abusive homes right now, whose schools were their sanctuary when they could get away. And my heart just just sinks when I think about them being stuck with uh, alcoholic family or a drug addicted parent uh, or just an abusive family altogether. And I also think about those um, on our streets, our homeless, and those that are disfranchised. So I'm going to ask you to continue to pray for those people who are less fortunate than us, um, even those around the world who are less fortunate than us out walking. So when I was walking, um, I just stopped. I live on a golf course, and it's just turning this brilliant green. And I just stopped, and I breathed, and I said, Ah, ah, I am standing in the midst and the presence of nature. And even though all is going on in the world around me, God is here in the midst of God is here in the midst of all that we are going through. And we need to remember that. So whenever you are feeling panic or anxious, remember, just go outside and look around. Look at the sky, look at the birds, look at your pets, whatever it is that you resonate with. And just remember, God is in the midst of this with us. We are not alone. And so I was thinking about nature and the renewal and this time of the year, and I was thinking about how good it feels to be in spiritual harmony. And spiritual harmony for me is about being present to life, being one with all of life. And when I can be in alignment with that harmony, I can be at peace. I can find within myself that harmony, that spiritual balance that all of us need right now. Spiritual harmony is when we can align our inner and outer consciousness, which means that we look past outer appearances and we begin to see the unfoldment of something greater than us. And that's when we say, God is in the midst. And it doesn't matter what language you use for God, you just know that that divine presence is there in that, in that moment. Our co-founder, Charles Fillmore, who wrote Keep a True Lent, well, it actually was written, um, I don't know when, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, published until 1953, five years after he died. And he said, the time is ripe for the advent of a new race, the advent of the spiritualized man. This will be brought about not by a miracle or the fiat of God, but by the gradual refinement of the man of the flesh into the man of spirit. Now, in these antiquated words, because he uses antiquated language for us, I can see that this is really what we are experiencing collectively. We are collectively experiencing a new awakening. And so we have an opportunity to plant seeds in consciousness that we have not had before. We are awakening. I see it everywhere around me on the articles that, I, that are getting sent to me. I see it on Facebook. I see it um, on the TV with some remarkable things that people have been saying. So I kind of modernized what he said, so maybe we can understand this a little more differently. What I'm saying is that the time is ripe for the advent of a new race consciousness, the advent of spiritualized 
humanity. This will be brought about not by a miracle or the hand of God, but through spiritual harmony, a shift in consciousness as we awaken to the oneness of this collective experience with our fellow, fellow humans and use it for, the, for good in our world. Think about this collective experience, this shared experience that we are having. Never before have we been connected like this or have we realized how connected we are. This coronavirus is almost everywhere on this planet. It has been documented to be in even islands and places that you wouldn't even think that it would exist. And through this pandemic, we are beginning to see that because of our globe, it has shrunk. It has shrunk so that we can realize our oneness together. We are not in this alone. We hear this all the time and we are not in this alone. We are working, we are working to find solutions. We are working to find new ways to be and to present ourselves. So I was texting with a friend the other night and he texted me just randomly and said, I'm feeling overwhelming grief from somewhere I cannot comprehend. I'm feeling overwhelming grief from somewhere I cannot comprehend. And I thought about what he was saying and this collective shared experience. And it's true, we are in a collective grieving around the world. And this collective grieving is felt in the air and in the consciousness, and sometimes we can't identify it. So then I came across an article that was written uh, by David Kessler, who is a renowned expert in grief. And he was talking about how this time and these feelings of grief that we are having is really anticipatory grief, as he calls it. And anticipatory grief is what we feel when we don't know what the future is going to bring. The uncertainty of the times that we are living in. And anticipatory grief takes everything that we know and shakes it up. And for us, in this situation, we don't have an exact ending point. And I think that's what makes us uncomfortable and disoriented, is that there's no firm date when this will end and dates are thrown all around. So this grief that we are collectively experiencing takes over our minds sometimes and it can spin out of control so that we begin to think about the worst things that can happen. And when we begin to think about the worst things that can happen to us, we forget about where we are in the present moment. So back to spiritual harmony. It's interesting to me that Although we are home in our mandated time, in our spaces, without person-to-person -person connection for many of us, while we are taking that time off, our planet Earth is healing. And I look at this, and I'm awed by it. So because of the lack of human activity right now, we see evidence. So the canals in Venice have cleared up so that they can even see fish. And I know when I was there 17 years ago, it was awful. <laughs> it smelled, there was trash floating everywhere. It was green and ugly. That's really something to 
admire is that Mother Earth can take care of herself. From the satellites, NASA has been able to document that during this time, greenhouse gases have dropped tremendously, especially around China, since all their factories were closed down. Someone said, Mother Earth is catching her breath. And I love that feeling. And so when we think about spiritual harmony and what it is that we are or are not doing, we can shift our mind into a new kind of healing. Myrtle Fillmore said, it is not always best for a person to continue doing that which he likes to do or that for which he has been trained. We need to round out to develop all of our faculties and powers to do that which brings us close to humanity and that which increases what the world needs most. Think about those words. So right now we could be selfish and say, yeah, I can't do the things that I really wanted to do and it's really kind of a bummer. But think about, sometimes it may be good for us to shift in the awareness in order for us to be in alignment with our earth, our bodies, our health, and our well-being, and say, what is it that I'm doing that I can change? How am I eating that I might change my habits? What am I thinking that I can change? What is really best for the world? And what seems to be best for the world, or at least our Earth right now, is this pause. And even though it can be frightening because it affects us humans, and there's no one that is going to be escaping from it on this planet, good will come out of this, I keep saying. And the good that comes is the good that comes naturally and it flows. And we will begin to see more healing, more evidence of that. See, there's things in this arena that we can control, and there's things in this arena that we cannot control at all. And it reminds me of the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. What is your spiritual understanding in this moment right now? How are you praying towards healing? Are you looking at yourself? Or are you you praying for the healing of all of humanity? And are you praying for the healing of all of our planet Earth. How does that healing look? Susan. Yeah. I might have a doctor song. You have a doctor song? Oh, that would be really appropriate. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a fun one. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do here. (laughs) Oh. Put up on a coconut, (laughs) bought it for a dime. His sister bought another, she paid it for a lime. You put the lime in the coconut, you drink it all up. You put the lime in the coconut, drink it all up. You put the lime in the coconut, drink it all up. She put the lime in the coconut, called a doctor, woke him up. She said, Doctor! Ain't there nothing I can take? She said, Doctor! To relieve his belly ache, she said, Doctor! Ain't there nothing I can take? She said, Doctor! To relieve this belly ache. And it goes on and on, but that brings <laughs> out the doctor part. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. <laughs> I don't suggest you put the lime in the coconut and drink it all up. (laughs) But I do suggest that perhaps you take this time and you really begin to think about your own thoughts and your own actions and take responsibility for yourself, take responsibility for your body, take responsibility socially. I was on a call yesterday with the governor Um, for an hour with uh, 600 other faith leaders uh, in the state of Colorado 
And one of the things that he reminded us of is this mandate is not about how we can find loopholes and go around it. This mandate is about us taking care of one another, of being socially responsible. So in this, I know we're all learning some new technology we haven't ever had to learn before, but just breathe, just, just breathe. You know that every single spiritual practice from every single world religion is to help us through times just as we are going through. And so I would say, read some spiritual inspiring works. Think about what that really means for you. My homework for you this week is to just pause and breathe and live in mindfulness. So when you go out and take a walk, Walk mindfully. Be in mindfulness of what is going on around you, of what your feelings are inside of you, and how you wish to be. Psalm 34, 14 says, Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So my friends, it is time for us to depart from our error ways and our error thinking and our error actions and to do good. So figure out how you can do that today and when we are back together again, which I can't wait because I miss you immensely. I wanna close with this from John 14, 27. Jesus said to us, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you not like the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is a collective shared human experience. And I know that we will come forth from this in a, an amazing way raising our awareness and our consciousness of all things. And we will do good, and we will be at peace, and we will pursue peace. So let us pray. Just sit and relax wherever you are right now, and close your outer eyes. Divine energy flows through me. I invite you to drop down into your heart space and feel that presence, that divine energy flowing through you, in you right now. How are you feeling in this moment? Be in touch with those emotions, those feelings. Are you grieving? Are you in fear? Are you anxious? Are you anticipating the worst? I ask you now to lay that all down. Let it go. 
We acknowledge our feelings and we let them go. And we move into the presence and the power that God is in the midst. And ask yourself, how can I, how can me, myself, support the healing presence on this earth? We have a time to invite wholeness into our earthly experience. And so let us do that together. We know the divine presence, the power, is pure love, pure energy, and pure healing power. And so we call forth that And we send it out to the world, to every corner, to every person, to hospitals everywhere. And we encircle each one of them with love. And hold in your hand an image of the earth. And see around this beautiful planet, blue healing light for all of its people, its animals, its plant life, all of life, and the earth itself. And as we move into a time of quiet, hold that vision of healing and peace and love in the silence. Just breathe. Divine energy flows through you. Breathe. Affirm with me, I am in spiritual harmony. I am whole and well and perfect, and I see our world as whole and well and perfect. And in that we give thanks. In that we rejoice. And we are filled with gratitude, for these are learning moments for each one of us. And we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for this new awareness, this new opportunity, this new way for us to become whole and well and perfect in your love and in your peace. We give thanks. Amen. Divine energy flows through you, healing your spirit, body, Divine energy flows through you, cleansing your thoughts and making you whole. Calm and quiet, strong and clear, God's voice within you holds no
And so we are grateful. <laughs> and whatever you do, don't put the lime in the coconut and drink it all up. <laughs> You're funny, Greg. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, so uh, just real quickly, I'd like to tell you what we are doing. I already talked about our meditation at 4 o'clock on Wednesdays via Zoom. Join us. It's a time for us to see each other. It's a time for us to pray together and to hold everything we know for the world. The second thing is I will be teaching Prosperity Plus online. Prosperity Plus, we can get this online, totally a download, or you can order the hard copy. It's filled with a book and a workbook and CDs. And so um, we're going to be doing that via Zoom starting the 21st of April, which is right after uh, Easter. And that will be on Wednesday evenings. We have a care team and our care team is there. It's our prayer chaplain team and several others and they are willing to pray with you anytime. Uh, so leave a call and leave a phone number on the office phone, or leave a phone number, leave your name on the, <laughs> on the office phone and we will call you back and pray with you or help you get groceries or prescriptions or whatever your need is. Let us know. You're not alone in this. We are here for you. So we have a care team for that. And then lastly, we um, are going to keep collecting our non-perishable items for the Park Hill Food Bank. The food banks are really in dire need for, um, for food right now to distribute. So please do that. Um, that will be, there's a barrel out on the breezeway. Please just leave your non-perishables in there and we will collect them and take them to the Park Hill Food Bank. So that being said, this is the time that we normally have an offering uh, in our community. And so we just want to thank you for your continuous gifts during this time because we, um, still have our bills to pay. <laughs> so we thank you. We know that you are most generous and giving. And we have created several ways for you to give. Of course, you can still mail us a check and we'll get that in the mail. Um, or you can give online to unity um, on the avenue.org. You can just go there and there's a little donate button. It's really easy. You just click on it and follow the instructions. We also have a brand new mobile app called Give Plus, so you can go to your app store, look up Give Plus, you can find Unity on the Avenue in there, and it'll take you through the, it'll walk you through how to sign up. And you can just simply, right now, get out your phone and text to give. So the phone number to text is 833-755-5507. So text to give, thank you so very much for that. And so I just want to thank you for your gifts and we'll just bless them knowing that they're out in the world. So divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. And we know that we receive all good in every moment as we give thanks. So thank you. All right, so let us sing. We have some special music for you by Greg and Pamela. Actually, this song is not by us. It's by Jane Luda. Well, I didn't mean so that you... To, I know. I wanted to just, just put a shout out. And the other song that we sang today is by Eddie Watkins Jr., which we sing a lot of his songs. So yeah. thanks, Eddie. Yeah. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you, Greg and Pamela. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Are you ready? Sure. Let me walk to the banks of the river of love Where the current runs deep, baptized in the one Where there's no
things of the past. It's time to be qualified. Let's not forget, but learn to forgive. God knows we gotta try. It's my responsibility to heal the wounds in me. Compassion, faith, and hope, and love will set us free. All right, thank you. Thank you again for joining us. We're so glad that you are. And ah, I just am praying for each one of you each and every day. Know that I hold you in my heart. So let us play, sing our closing hymn. <laughs> Spirit is always walking with you, in you, as you, and bless you this week. See you next week. Thank you.